Hey everyone, today I want to talk about unwanted subtle transformation and I'm going to start off. Okay, so I was watching with Nick Jones. Nick Jones, I really enjoy his content and he introduced this man named Stephen Darby, which Stephen Darby already passed away, but he was showing one of his preachings, which I loved. It was hardcore truth. It was information, but it was, it was very good information. And so I started checking out others' uh, preachings of his on YouTube, which I really liked, I really enjoyed, but there were some that I didn't really agree with. But he himself said that sometimes he reads things and he, he's like, he said this, he, and I liked the analogy he used. So he goes, I can eat a fish and spit out the bones. You can't do that with a child because he may choke. He goes, but once you're old enough or once you've been through enough, you know what you can take in and what you can just ignore, you know? So I'll take that advice. <laughs> um, but I want to take you guys, if you guys can go with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12. And here it reads that Eli, you, if you all remember, Eli is the one that prophet Samuel grew up with. Eli was a priest, right? It says that Eli's sons were scrongers, meaning that they were evil, they were dishonest. The Bible says that they were sleeping around, they were committing adultery, sleeping with the women that would go to the temple and they would they were being discon um a, they were showing contempt for the offerings and stuff that the people would bring to the Lord, right? So God saw this as very evil, and we see how God he, he you know the, the everything gets back to Eli. And Eli, instead of confronting his kids, he just questions them. In verse 22, he's just like, oh, how can this be? You know, you shouldn't do this. But he doesn't correct them. He doesn't say like, this is unacceptable and these are going to be the consequences. He never brings correction. And because of that, God kills his two sons and God kills Eli as well, right? Because there was no correction and there was evil. And this is the problem that everyone wants to be the good guy. And the good guy is actually the one who brings correction. Because had he brought correction, he would have spared his son's lives. But because he didn't, and it was very unjust, and the people of God were suffering, right? Then all of this happened. So have you ever seen parents that the mom tells the dad, like, oh, please go and punish your, you know, our child. And then the father's like, no, you punish him because I don't want to be the bad guy. And it's, you're looking at them like, are you really that ridiculous that none of you can put on your pants and, and, and be the grown up and be the adult and say, look, you're not supposed to do that. This is wrong. Go on time out or whatever it is you have to do so that the kid can learn not to do what is wrong, right? But a lot of people in today's culture and, and through always, always, they just don't, they're just scared to bring correction. They're scared not to be liked, you know, because a little kid will, you bring correction, he's like, I don't love you. I hate you. Mm. <laughs> it's not true. It's a, it's tantrum that kids throw, right? So if you look at the book of Daniel, chapter one, verse three, it talks about that. There's this man, this king, and he says, we want to bring in these Israel boys and we want to train them to be like the Chaldeans. We want to give them our food. We want them to speak our language, meaning to have our mindset, to think like us, to be in our culture. And if you guys know culture is something that is very powerful, it's very influential. Many of us, we have paradigms because of the culture that we grew up in, right? So it says in, in verse eight, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine that he drank. So Daniel said, eh, 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 I'm not going to allow what he's feeding me to come into me. I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy the lie. I'm not going to, I'm not going to allow it to enter my heart. Right? So why am I saying this? Because listen, in the book of Genesis chapter one, verse 27, the Bible says that God made men in his image. God loved us. He made us in his image. But the enemy hates this because the enemy is not made in the image of God. And he's always hated this. So we see how he's always tried to distort this. And one of the first um, places in the Bible where I see this is in Genesis chapter 6, 4, where it says, There were giants on the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them, which were the Nephilims, right? So we see that this race, this race was not in the image of God. This race was something that humanity got together with evil, with the fallen angels, and they created this new race that they were not in the image of God, which is why God brought the flood and destroyed this race. However, we see that this race again pops up and you're like, how? Because of the genes, right? Because remember the bloodline. So what happens is that God now sends the Israelites out of Egypt, says, go to the land, which I'm going to give you, Canaan. And he said, and when the spies go, the spies say, oh no, we saw these giants, but we're like locusts in front of them. There was only two that were like, no, we can, we can definitely win this thing. So we see that there's still giants. We see how even David fought against Goliath. So we know that there's still giants, but God's purpose was always to defeat and kill these giants because they were not made in the image of God. They were something that the enemy tried to bring to, to bring distortion, right? So what happens is that because there's no correction, because the uh, humanity, because the Bible also says 
back then that the, the, the thoughts of men were constantly to do evil. And because the thoughts of men are constantly to do evil, no one wants to correct and no one wants to be the bad guy. And everyone starts to be contaminated. We see how the, this man wanted to contaminate Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, but they had to make a choice and they had to propose, to pr they had to say, no, I'm not going to allow myself to be influenced. I'm not going to allow myself to be convinced. I'm not going to allow myself to eat what they're giving me. And the thing is that this man, um, Stephen Darby, I was listening to him and he said, this is what Hollywood does. Hollywood has been feeding us for the last 30 years. That's why things that before they were unacceptable and everyone would say like, no, this is, this is not acceptable. Now people are like, well, you know, and they're more accepting of it because they've been giving it to us little by little by little. You notice that on, on shows, you always had to see like maybe like two, three, four years back, you always had to see that now there always had to be someone that was gay in the, t in the TV because of not, oh my goodness, God forbid that they're going to get offended because we're not showing that. You know, when way back years ago, it was unacceptable. So little by little by little, he says, he said this, he said, 